young fighters. Same reach, the weight right there, mirror image that we're back and forth. The difference being that Luis Padilla has been a pro since he was 16. Want to touch gloves? Do it now. God bless. Here we go. Our main event, Golden Boy Fight Night. 10 rounds scheduled. And right away, Scrappy comes in with a leading left hook, trying to make an impression. In high school. Team was good. He's running back with a little Juco football. Yeah, and it, and it drives him a lot that he that he's all he feels like he's a lot of that was because in his younger career, he was fighting guys that were grown up. So he had no way to, he didn't have the power at all. Yeah, he was learning on the job and didn't really want to sit down on his punches. I think right now what's going to be more of an issue is that uh, Lu Luis, but well, yeah, he has a little bit of an awkward style. Not sure if uh, Scrappy's used to that. He's gotten work, and Scrappy, uh, he's a workhorse in that gym. Because if he uses his reach, does use angles, it would be a lot more difficult for, uh, for Scrappy to get to him. Like, that is exactly what his corner told him not to do. Do not just sit there with your guard up. Good combinations, and that's hurt by the yeah, up against the ropes. And Scrappy's buckling the knees of the Mexican fighter. He needs to hold on. Body shots from Ramirez. Body work again from Ramirez. Bale Going upstairs now. Balea needs to hold on. Balea's Rolling not right listening to you, Marlon. He's trying to train, and he's getting tagged in the corner again. Ramirez, one, two, wobbly legs for Padilla. Breathing heavy as the Mexican. He's game though, he's battling back. Final seconds of a very strong second round. First to him, he's had that rough upbringing. His brother, lost his brother, his other brother, the system, as you said, his younger sister got an example for her. And you see the power punches through two rounds. Uh, it's probably that I gotta do this to chase my family and do things. But he knows he's gotta you know bring the ruckus. He's also gotta create havoc. You can't be boring. No, and he's making adjustments um, as and when when Padilla does. Padilla's trying to do what he can do to survive and Scrappy keeps adjusting to whatever happens and I think that's you know, that's a that's a beautiful thing for a fighter to make their own adjustments. Scrappy with over two hundred punches thrown with the three and a half rounds. He's very active. Charisma in there. He's got the orange socks. He's got the orange bangle gloves. Even though he's never been to Cincinnati. You, you fight like you live in uh, shows. An animal. The instructions that he's giving are, are very precise and exactly what needs to be done. Uh, Julian Chua bit his bones at a wild card. That's where he saw Scrappy for the first time. Scrappy winning out of Brickhouse and Scrappy. Uh, see, that's the kind of stuff that gets you. <laughs> Uh, you get the booze. Yeah. Becomes a bit too cocky. Yeah. Whether he's banging hard, he's still he's still touching. If Padilla had a little bit of pop, this could be a different fight. Yes. If he kept fighting the way he's fighting right now, he's doing a really good job now listening to his corner. Work, work. Yep. Money, money. He's, uh, he's doing well. He's, he's a little wet. He's getting a little wet, yeah. Getting hit. He's doing better at realizing things are coming back. But um, I, w I would want to, I want to see him uh, get Padilla out of there, the way he talks. Huh. See, he just got wet right there, basically. And you heard the reaction from the crowd. Padilla and Scrappy going back and forth. My combiner of the bell, gentlemen. The eighth round, winding down. Our main event here in Indio, California. You can watch fights. You can see these fighters in prime time. And very entertaining fights, very good matchups. You're going to see wars. Definitely. You gotta pass the test, but 
And if you can't, if you can't figure that out, then you don't deserve to headline or be on a Saturday Night Fight. But you can want it, but you gotta show you gotta have the talent. Exactly. You've been there, done that more than. <laughs> for too long. <laughs> Good action. Good action here in the ninth round. I think the crowd really uh, picked up um, Parilla's uh, energy. Yeah. Tenth oh. and final round. Hi, right, Marlene. How do you explain your and a half ago? As he said, a fight that I should not have taken, a fight that I shouldn't have signed. Don't admire your work too much. I mean, at this point, you've landed everything. You, you've hit him everywhere but the bottom of his feet. So it's just, we get it. But are you going to get him out of there? No. That's a tough dude coming from Guadalajara, 22-year-old Luis Padilla. Now I understand the silent assassin part. Yeah. Yeah, he's not playing around. He's, he's not going to give up. The Scrappy Ramirez came in the night. The main event controlled the fight, looked good, and they go the distance. The winner of this fight will be crowned the new WBA Continental America Super Flyweight Champion. Here are the scoring totals. Fernando Villarreal scores at 100 to 90. Pat Russell and Damian Walton have it 99-91. All for your winner by unanimous decision. He is still 